Hello, my beautiful Scorpio friends, and welcome to your horoscope for August of 2021, where Scorpio, this month, I actually like the vibe for you in terms of the 10th house, 4th house axes. There's a lot more going on, and we're going to talk about that, but there seems to be some energy for you, Scorpio, this month that has something to do with advancing a move making a move and that is making a move in the career department or the reputation or what we know you as public department but also something around homes and one of the things i was thinking about um, as i was looking at the horoscope that's coming up for you this month is scorpio <clears throat> i don't know what your experience is with buying and flipping houses but some of the changes that could be coming in the housing arena could have to do with an additional property that you have. Now, if that's not your circumstance, if that's not your case, we can definitely just look at some of the energy bringing a move along for you, especially with this full moon coming up in the energy of Aquarius. Now, we also had in July a full moon in Aquarius and it was at one degree. And now this one's going to be at 29 degrees. So maybe you wanted to move, change the house, something was happening with the family before, but now there's this sense of like culmination of it, I think, over this next four weeks that you're going to be able to bring out from the end of August and, and moving that forward. So definitely an interesting vibe on the 10th house, 4th house axis. So Scorpios, let's get in here, check out what is going on for you this month, okay? So right at the beginning of the month on the 8th, we're going to have a new moon happening in the energy of Leo. So at 16 degrees of Leo, right there at the tip top of the chart in the 10th house. And yes, the 10th house in astrology is known as the midheaven, the career house. You know, what you're going to do in the world, what we see you do in public, the work that you are doing. But also, maybe you're retired. Maybe you've never had to have a job. Maybe you just don't have a job. So I also look at the midheaven or the 10th house area as what we know you as in public. What do we call you? What's your name? Are you single? And and maybe then now you got married and you have a different title. Are you known as the best volunteer? Are you, do we call you mom? Do we call you dad? What do we know you as and call you as in public? Because whatever that is, this is just as much a part of the 10th house and the soul level calling to some very, um, in-person material kind of work that you're doing. So I want you to think about that as you're listening, Scorpio. It doesn't just have to be the job, but it's someplace that we see you moving very much so in public. Now, <clears throat> having a new moon in Leo, First of all, the new moon is when we're planting our seeds of intention to begin something new, to have new energy come your way. It doesn't mean you have to get a whole new job. Certainly for some people, a new job or a promotion or some kind of raising um, of your status that we see in public could be on the table, but it could just also be fresh perspective that's coming in this particular direction. So for some of you, one of the things I was thinking about is that this is Leo energy right? It's creative. It's joyful. It's expressive. You know, is this this time where it's time for your annual review at work and it's time to really see how you've shown up and maybe ask for that raise? Maybe the new moon is going to bring in some energy for you over this next period of your life where if you want to have a promotion, you want to own your own business, Leo, I want to do it my way. You want to shine in this career or public zone in some way. The new moon could absolutely be ushering in something for you, Scorpio, that'll allow you to make these changes. The bigger thing I think of, though, with Leo energy is truly this question of in your career, in what you're doing in public, is it joyful? Is it joyful? Is it playful? Is there freedom that's available to it? Are you taking a risk in this area of your life to have the experience that you really feel like you want to have? Because this is what this new moon, I think, is very much so bringing to the table for you, okay? Now, as we continue on in the month, we're going to see Mercury move into the energy of Virgo. This puts Mercury in home court territory because Mercury is the ruling energy of Virgo. So it's very comfortable to work in this area. But also, as Mercury makes this move, we have to pay attention to the vibrations and the resonance that Mercury also is in charge of, which is Gemini energy. So we're going to look at this combination of the 11th house and the 8th house that is sinking up under this energy. So first, Mercury's entrance into this 11th house could bring new conversations with friends, 
social groupings, new ideas, new decisions that are pretty important for you around your long range goals and your aspirations. This could de definitely be something that is on your table where you're making some decisions at this time and over the next couple weeks. Now, Mercury is going to zip through the energy of Virgo and jump into Libra at the end of the month. So you've just got a couple weeks to work with this mercurial energy. So you could find that it's very busy in your social zone. You could find that on social media, things are busy. But what I will tell you about Virgo, that is absolutely the gift of Virgo, is that Virgo energy, first of all, wants things to be the very best that they can be, as healthy, as organized, as put together as it can be. So in your 11th house, Mercury may be helping you make some decisions about if you are aligned with the appropriate tribe of people. Is it the best that it can be for you? Is it healthy, right? Are you doing trauma bonding? Or is there an actual heartfelt, we're getting some things done, living our best life kind of connection in your tribe zone, in your friend zone, in where you're associating, right? And I do think for some of you, this mercurial energy may just be really exciting because it means your gyms are opening back up so you can go back to your health and fitness classes. And that's a really big deal for Scorpio energy, I think. Now, the other portion of this Mercury move into the 11th house does include some of this Gemini energy being stimulated. So this is eighth house energy, okay? <clears throat> my vulnerability, my intimacy, the things that hit me in this deep place, this deep level. And that's where I think that this Mercury energy is helping you make decisions around this 11th house, right? It's bringing conversations to the surface that need to be had because you don't want to have shallow relationships in your life. I think wasting your time on people, places, and things is worse than wasting your money. And I have a Capricorn South node. So it's pretty important. So you want to make sure that you're getting the good stuff. You're getting the healing stuff. You're getting the stuff that lets your mind and your heart and your expression be put forward. And it's also going to be some energy where your surroundings, your tribing up, um, they need to be able to support the vision of you going forward with those long range plans, goals and designs. The sun is still in the 10th house. If you've launched a project out at this time, perhaps Mercury in the 11th house is helping you get that message out in some way. So I look forward to seeing how this is going to be manifesting for you, Scorpio. So let me know in the comment section down below. Okay. As we move on and we get to the 16th of the month, Venus is going to move into the energy of Libra. So it's now coming into your 12th house space, the house where things are hidden. It's quiet. There's respite. There's replenishment. There's rejuvenation. There are secrets that live in this 12th house space. It's all behind the scenes. So Venus, anytime Venus enters into the 12th house space, first of all, I feel like it's like giving your spirit a hug, right? It's like, hey, how are you doing? How is our spirit doing? How's our spiritual practice doing? Do we have harmony? Do we have balance? Is it luscious over here in the spirit space? So Venus will naturally bring um, a magnetizing to level and to balance out this particular area. So if you've had some things going on behind the scenes, or you've been feeling a little bit out of whack, I think that Venus helps in this 12th house space to get that to settle a little bit or to help you come into that balance. The other thing is though, Venus in the 12th house, you could absolutely be connecting with an ex. You could absolutely be thinking about things from the past. People could show up in your dream life and your meditation life. And that doesn't mean that you're trying to go back to them. But sometimes the universe, as it walks in between these worlds, especially in Libra, will show us where we're at in our connections or our need to acknowledge cutting the connection with other people. Sometimes in the 12th house space, an ex or an ex situation has to come back to our consciousness consciousness so that we can say thank you, forgive it, and let it transition out. Now, I am not above the belief that Venus's entrance into the 12th house is not going to bring some kind of secret for some of us as well, right? So this could definitely be something that's coming onto your particular table or your particular surface at this time. Venus is going to magnetize. You don't have to work hard where Venus is at. She will attract into you what you need. So if you're looking for partnership, right? If you're looking for partnership behind the scenes to work on a project with you so that you can launch it out into the light of day later, that could be one absolutely avenue that you could be going down. But also, 
if some there's cracks in the relationship where you're seeking something behind the scenes, some kind of behind the scenes pleasure, Venus will magnetize that in as well. So just keep that in mind for whatever that looks like in your manifestation, okay? On the 19th, we're going to see Uranus take its retrograde at 14 degrees of Taurus. So just across the street, this is going to light up the seventh house space. Now Uranus has been here in Taurus, shaking up your seventh house area, shaking up your Taurus areas. So I'm going to tell you, Scorpius, if you've got, if you've got other Taurus people or people with strong Taurus placements in your life, you have probably been experiencing them in a much different vibration for absolutely sure, right? But also for you personally, Uranus has been loosening up the ways that we've been very fixed in our relationship, fixed ideas, beliefs that we've had, things from the past will have been being shaken up because when lightning hits the earth and cracks it open, the gems, the jewels, all of these beautiful things rise to the surface, but so do all the dead bodies, right? So all of the things that have needed to come to your attention to be seen so that you can be free of them is what has been on your table and at your attention. Now, as Uranus is retrograding here, where there's maybe been chaos and surprise and, and the unearthing of things, now Uranus's retrograde gives you an opportunity to assimilate what you've seen, to make sure that your attitudes, your actions, your beliefs, and how you're showing up are not destructive anymore, but instead are moving you towards freedom. I think it will also help you cut cords with some relationships from the past that just don't need to be here anymore because they can't vibrationally come forward with you um, into your next phase of life. So I definitely think that's something we'll see during this Uranus retrograde, okay? Now, as we get to the 22nd of the month, we're going to see a full moon happening at that 29 degrees of Aquarius that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. So this is happening in the fourth house zone. That one degree Aquarius full moon, I think really got some things started or stimulated that area a little bit. And now at a 29 degree full moon, it is massaging it to its fullness. The lights are fully on. Maybe you're making that move at this time. You're selling that extra property. Something is happening around the domestic zone for sure in this particular time frame. Whether it be that somebody's moving into your house, moving out of your house, these are definitely things that the full moon can bring to your table. Is your emotional life changing around your friendships, your social groups, and your, your technology at home? Are you having a little bit of a change of heart here? And you have to look at where can you have this fourth house experience and be very full in your heart feel like you're connected you have friendship you have tribeship in what are your foundations and also let the sun be up in the sky shining your best and brightest life where is the compromise between both of those things that you can live and move and have your being happily scorpio in between those are things you're going to be paying attention to now later in the day on the 22nd we're going to see the sun move into the energy of virgo bringing light heat life and vitality to this 11th house space so as the sun brings that level of vitality to this 11th house zone again, I think about your socials. Where are you out in the social sphere? Where are you connecting with people online? What does the friendship and organization zone look like for you at this particular time? And are you in position where you are actually taking action? on organizing and prioritizing your future plans and designs. What you aspire for yourself, are you taking the actions? Are you putting your vitality behind that so that you can see some movement in this particular area? But also Scorpio, I think too, man, if you've been feeling like you just haven't had the right kind of tribe behind you, or you've been feeling very isolated, or like something's been very solitary for you for a while, this could bring a space of an outlet. Mercury is still in the 11th house here. Is there stuff that you need to talk about, but you're like, I feel like I don't have anybody to talk about that with. This could definitely bring an outlet to your surface because Virgo wants you to be as healthy as you can be, okay? Now, as we close out the month, Mercury is going to move on 
get into the space of the 12th house, which again, for me, re-emphasizes this idea of maybe you need to talk to someone, right? Maybe you got to talk about what's going on in that place that's in between the worlds where something's happening in your mind, your head, your heart, that only we can't see it until it manifests in a different way. In the energy of Libra, there's a wonderful space for conversation in partnership, but also with Mercury in that energy of Libra, it's going to be here until November. We're going Going to experience some retrograde of Mercury in Libra energy. So as Mercury is working through this 12th house space for you, you could be bringing some things to completion, ending some conversations, but this could be just the beginning of the ending because we will need to move through the Mercury retrograde and see what that brings to your attention as you come to this slow down 12th house space. Do not be surprised, Scorpio, truly. If conversations from the past, ideas, visions, and dreams from the past do find themselves surfacing for you, especially as we get through this next handful of months until we get to about November 5th, okay? All right, my beautiful Scorpio friends, I hope that you get everything out of this month that you are manifesting, moving towards, and want for yourself, of course. Please make sure that you have got your own individual chart so that you can see how the nuance of this month is working for you in your life. Go to astro.com, get a free one, go to whoever you are doing astrology with and get one from them, but make sure you have your chart specifically, okay? Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Please share your month with me down below. I love to always send you some good vibes. Even if I can't answer every single comment, I try and like it and let you know that I see you, okay? So I love you guys and I'll see you next month. Bye.